Welcome to Kairos. I am back with Pastor Tom Peach to talk about a Saint's Day that is coming up in the church calendar, Mm. and that is Saint Timothy. The church remembers Timothy on... January the 24th. Very good. I did my research very well for this video. And so today we want to talk with Tom just a little bit about Timothy, who he is, how we can be encouraged as Christian people by remembering him and those sorts of things. So Tom, when we talk about Timothy, who are we talking about? Great. Well, actually, it's good you mentioned what date it is, January the 24th. January the 25th is St. Paul, Mm. and January the 26th is Titus. So Paul is like the ham in a ham sandwich, and um, the bread is Timothy and Titus. Mm -hmm. They were two of Paul's closest associates, if you like. Mm -hmm. Um, So St. Paul in the Bible um, has Timothy as what he even calls his son in the faith. Mm. So Timothy is a pastor. He is probably converted even by Paul on one of his missionary journeys in Lystra. Um, We don't know exactly whether he was converted or had been converted earlier, but it looks like it was probably Paul. And and so he comes to us as a scriptural saint. Mm. Some saints we don't hear about in the scriptures because they live much later, but the church does honour and remember some saints who actually come to us in the scriptures themselves. So when we talk about Timothy, we've got these books of the Bible called First and Second Timothy. So yes. this is the same Timothy, but did he didn't write those? How does that work? Right, exactly. These are letters from St. Paul to St. Timothy, mm-hmm. from Paul to Timothy, from the kind of senior pastor to the junior pastor. Mm-hmm. And um, they're wonderful. They're sometimes called the pastoral epistles. They're wonderful books which go into, in some ways, the office of ministry. Mm-hmm. And so Timothy does provide a great example, especially for pastors. Mm. Um, That's one aspect. I mean, interestingly too, Timothy is probably the most prominent non-apostle pastor, right, in the scriptures. So you have a whole bunch of apostles from whom we receive the office of holy ministry as a church, and some people in particular. But there is Timothy, who was Mm. not an apostle, um, who was sort of the next generation of Mm. Christians, you might even say. And so the letters of 1st and 2nd Timothy from Paul to Timothy offer us a glimpse into how the church looked, Mm -hmm. also how the office of ministry looked in the very early church. So what else do we know about the life of Timothy? Oh yeah, so so he he followed Paul around a lot. Paul sort of used him as a bit of a right-hand man. Mm -hmm. Occasionally he would use Timothy as a postman to deliver Mm -hmm. his letters, but also as someone to stay and try and fix situations. He spent time at Corinth. He spent time in um, Thessalonica or Thessaloniki. He probably spent time in Ephesus too, around Asia Minor especially, but into Greece as well. And he would stay there as a pastor, um, looking after things, sometimes perhaps in a somewhat bashful way. So Timothy occasionally, I mean, in the scriptures, he often appears eternally young. Um, He was younger than Paul Paul tells him in the letters to him not to be ashamed of his age and to Mm. still be bold. So it suggests that Timothy was a bit shy at times, maybe not the most confident public speaker. And and so Paul is often exhorting him to not be ashamed of his age and to be strong. So one other thing we know about Timothy, we get it from Acts chapter 16, is that he had a Jewish mother, her name was Eunice, and a Greek father. In some ways, it looks like maybe his mother wasn't the most faithful of Jewish women. After all, Timothy was never circumcised, hmm. and which it's is curious. a strange, yeah. curious thing for a Jewish woman not to do. But on the other hand, we do hear him that Timothy was raised in the faith well, that he was taught um, by his mother especially. And um, reference to his grandmother as well. Lois, that's right. Yeah. She's named as well, that he was raised well in the faith. And so in some ways too, I think Timothy can be an example for those of us who are born and bred in the faith a little bit. Paul had a dramatic conversion. We know Mm -hmm. about this. It seemed to give him juice and energy. Mm -hmm. Um, Timothy was born and bred in the faith. And so perhaps as people who were born and bred in the faith can sometimes attest to, this contributed to his laziness at times, Mm -hmm. to his taking things for granted almost. Mm. 
Paul has to say in one of his letters, fight the good fight, Timothy. Yeah. Um, almost yeah. flare up a kind of somewhat apathy that can come from people who are born and bred in the faith. Mm. It's no sin to be born and bred in the faith. It's a wonderful gift. Mm. But it can bring with it its own challenges as well, which perhaps Timothy had and which we can be inspired by in the way that he addressed them and the way that Paul addressed them in him too. That's a great, because it, I mean, that, that, that pattern you see um, in my experience right up until today where you'll have... Um, let's say in our own setting in the Lutheran church, you'll have one person who's been raised in a Lutheran home and all this mm. sort of thing, and then you'll have a, a convert come in, either a convert to faith in Christ c- completely or someone who's come from another Christian tradition who comes into the Lutheran church. And sometimes these people are fired up and they're almost like shaking these young people that have grown up. Don't you see how what, what you've got here, how good it is, right? And so it's fascinating when you see perhaps some of these Um, patterns right back into the scriptures themselves between Paul and Timothy. That's right. And while it's not scriptural, there's a good church tradition that has it that Timothy was actually martyred for his faith. Mm -hmm. And so there's this almost joyous ending where he does fight the good fight. He Mm -hmm. remains faithful even unto death, Mm -hmm. even unto martyrdom. And so there's this lovely, inspiring example for all of us who grew up in good Christian homes perhaps, but Mm -hmm. get lazy and, um, and think of Christianity as one more thing among many in my life, maybe intertwined with my family, but never something deeply owned. Mm. Timothy, great example for us. So this is really encouraging stuff. Um, mm. Tom, it reminds me again of, of how the Lutheran Confessions talk about remembering the saints, that these are things that we can be encouraged in our faith when we see um, what grace these people received and, and how they were sustained by faith and imitate their good works. Um, a- any last things come to mind then about the life of St. Timothy? Well, I mentioned his sort of timidity and shyness. One other passage that's worth just bringing up. Um, In 1 Timothy, um, it is where Paul tells Timothy, do not be ashamed about the testimony of the Lord. Mm. He even adds, nor ashamed of me, his prisoner. Paul's saying to Timothy, don't be ashamed about the Lord. Don't be ashamed about Paul either. And it's a great passage for us, especially in an age where there's cause to be ashamed about being a Christian. Mm-hmm. You get shamed for it at times. It's mm-hmm. tough. It's awkward to say it. And here Paul gives strong encouragement to Timothy, which he took on board. Don't be ashamed of the testimony mm-hmm. of the Lord. It's nothing to be ashamed about that we have a heavenly inheritance, rather something to boast of. Boast in our yeah. weaknesses, but boast of the strength and the testimony of our Lord. Actually, just this past Sunday, I preached on uh, Jesus' words that he sends back to John the Baptist Blessed is anyone who takes no offence at me. Mm, mm. Yeah, indeed. Well, thanks, Tom, for being on to talk about St. Timothy. January 24th is a time where the church remembers him, how we can be encouraged in our faith as we remember this child of God. This is Kairos. God bless you. What was your question that you asked me? (laughs) 